Hi, I'm Gary Wilson, documentary filmmaker for the Great Smoky Mountains Association's Smoky Mountain Explorer series. Each film in this series has presented unique challenges. For the first film, Island in the Sky, it was trekking up to the top of Klingman's Dome after Hurricane Sandy unleashed a three and a half foot blizzard on Halloween of 2012. For Seasons of the Smokies, it was flying in a small Cessna, about 10,000 feet over the park, while in the middle of winter, while cracking the window and hanging a camera outside to film aerials of the park. For Sacred Mountain of the Smokies, it was huffing a large pack with camera gear, well over 500 miles over multiple trips up and down the mountain throughout all conditions and all times of the year. For the latest film, The Land of Falling Water, many unique challenges were brought into creating this film. Half of the project involved trekking to many of the park's scenic waterfalls, streams, and rivers. Some of its most beautiful features are the tumbling streams that feed a vast watershed and host a stunning amount of biological diversity. Some 2,900 miles of streams and rivers fall from the impressive mountain peaks that sit more than a mile high above the foothills of one of the highest sub-ranges east of the Mississippi River. The other part of the film required documenting the stream life of the Great Smoky Mountains. This was uniquely challenging, as well as rewarding, since it was like going on a treasure hunt to film many unique species within the park waters. This is a window into a rare hidden world that most park visitors do not see. Sometimes, while attempting to film a spawning event or find certain species, it would take days, if not weeks of snorkeling to eventually find and land the series of shots. For example, we knew that river chubs would begin to build their nests sometime during the end of spring, but many factors come into play, especially with the weather and water temperatures. To gather the sequence, I literally spent a week in multiple streams looking for them to build their nests, and many times I came up empty-handed. Eventually, on a perfect cloudy day, I found a nest and was able to follow it over the course of a few days as I witnessed a great spawning ritual emerging right before my eyes. As they swim and cord above the nest, they will deposit tiny fertilized eggs that will settle into the crevices of the rock nest to safely incubate and hatch. Most eggs hatch within two to three weeks. Another species of fish, the central stone roller, also uses the river chub's nest to spawn. The males also have large white tubercles on their heads they use to aggressively fight. Males spend a considerable amount of energy attempting to dominate one another to control access to the nests. These battles can last for hours. Interestingly, it rained the next day, and the activity ended. This was also the last major sequence I needed to complete the film. That was one of the last major rainfalls that would occur in the park in 2016, as the park would then face the driest five-month period on record. Another major challenge was documenting the brook trout spawn. They tend to spawn anywhere between the end of September into early November and the streams are very frigid at this point. And so I spent many hours hiking and staking out pools that had potentially good spawning activity. It was a lot of hard long days, and to achieve these shots, I had to literally act like a rock in the streams. Staying stationary, the trout will eventually presume their natural behavior once they realize you are not a predatory threat. It was literally a unique experience that I had never done before. And I hope when people view this film, they come out of it appreciating how valuable this resource is.